All right, well, welcome back, everyone. We continue to take our journey down the lane of Aurora's innovation, mm -hmm. and we continue to celebrate the 10 year, an year anniversary of Amazon Aurora. Uh, my name is Aditya Samant. I'm a principal database special solutions architect, and I work on Aurora every single day. To take you along uh, on this journey, we have Adrian. Thank you, Aditya. Hey, everyone. My name is Adrian Samiguel. I'm a principal partner and a press architect here at AWS. And today we're joined by a legend, the legend, Mark. Mark, would you mind introducing yourself briefly? Let us know what you do. Yeah. Hi, everyone. And thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm a senior principal engineer. Um, I work on Aurora DSQL. I've been with Amazon for about 15 years. Um, yeah, it's just super excited to be here and, you know, walk through how you get started with DSQL and, and what pricing looks like. Yeah, and we are going to talk about Aurora DSQL. Until now, we talked about serverless databases. We talked about limitless databases. But Aurora DSQL, it's just a baby. It's only three months old, even though Aurora <laughs> is 10 years old. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about it before we go down the, the pricing? It's actually uh, quite a big coincidence that as we celebrate 10 years, uh, DSQL turns three months as of today. Exa exactly three months ago, we, we well, were then generally happy, available. Yeah, happy, happy three happy months, three DSQL. Months. Um, you know, I, I've actually been working on DSQL for a lot longer than three months, uh, okay. something like five years. Um, wow. Yeah, DSQL is, uh, so it's a distributed SQL product. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, over the years, you know, AWS has built services like S3 and SQS and we, you know, we've already built up in a set of experience and tools and foundational services that that that, that make this all possible. Yeah. Um, and so DSQL is really sort of taking those tools and learnings and techniques and bringing them to SQL. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I think we have had a distributed databases uh, such as DynamoDB, for example, mm -hmm. but we have never had a relational distributed database. I think that's kind of the key differentiator here, isn't it? Yeah, so I mean, Dynamo has just really changed the industry. Um, you know, the Dynamo yeah. paper is just a very well-respected piece of research. Um, and customers have been asking us, like, hey, can we get some of the properties that Dynamo has um, you know, like it scales to infinity. You know, when, when that claim was first made, there was a lot of uh, skepticism around that, but it's really proven to be true. Um, can we get the ease of management, right? Like in DynamoDB, you're not thinking about provisioning the servers, mm -hmm. um, none of that stuff, right? Uh, there's no patching. There's, uh, no, there's patching. no security groups, right? Because it's part of the service. Um, so can we have all of that without giving up on what relational has to offer? Uh, customers love being able to organize their, their schema in a bunch of tables and do joins and, and evolve their schema over time. Um, and so how do we do that? Like that's been the challenge. And, yeah. uh, you know, as I said, I've been working on this for a long time. It's not an easy challenge, uh, but that's what DSQL is trying to do. Yeah. And folks, let us know how long has taken you to patch your fleets. I know I have been involved in some <laughs> with some customers where there's like a, a year long cycle of yeah. patching your entire fleets. Let us know. Well, um, speaking of a distributed database, a new distributed database, the, the fear is always, how much is this going to cost me? Yes, it can, it can scale perpetually to infinity. Is it going to cost me to infinity? So what are you going to show us about cost today? I think the title of this is less than a dollar. I mean, I'm super, super intrigued. Right. So, you know, when, when I think when a lot of customers hear, hey, this service can scale, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they hear dollars, right? Yep. Like, that sounds expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but but as I said, like D DSQL is really trying to do what Dynamo did, right? It's trying to give you that scale, but you can also get started for next to nothing on DynamoDB if you just want to make a table and put a row in. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Um, to kick off, uh, let's make a cluster. Um, so you'll see from this dropdown, we, we can pick between single and, and multi-region. If you stay tuned, you'll get to see what multi-region looks like. But for now, let's do single region. Okay. And and this is the page. That's um, it. Yeah, there is no scroll bar. I, I am scrolling. Uh, you can see maybe. <laughs> um, you know, you can turn off deletion protection. You can change the encryption key, or you can give it a name. So you know, we can say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, that, no, that's for us. For DC call, right? You know, Aurora DC call. <laughs> three months. Here we go. Okay. Um, hit create, and here we have our cluster that's creating. So, just quick question for the audience: What is this going to cost me? Ooh, that's a good question. 
I think it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars. That's it. 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour? Yeah, 15, 20 bucks an hour. Easy, easy. Okay, well, while that creates, let's just hop on over to the DSQL pricing page. Okay, Okay. so um, our request-based services like S3, like how do those work, right? So in S3, um, when you put objects in buckets, you pay for API requests. Mm -hmm. In DynamoDB, when you put an item into a table, you pay for write operations. When you read items out of tables, you pay for read operations. And, And like if you have that mental model, that's how DSQL works. Um, so DSQL meters uh, usage, request uh, API request usage uh, in these units called DPUs. Mm-hmm. Um, so distributed processing units. Um, and uh, DPUs represent the work that the SQL engine has to do to process your requests. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we get into the SQL demo in a minute, uh, I'll sort of show you how to think about that. Um, Hey, that's not bad. One million for eight bucks, I'll take it. Yeah, so we're going to be doing our demo today in in uh, US West uh, too, and it, it'll be about eight dollars per million. Okay, so the second thing that happens, just going back to like the S3 or the Dynamo example, mm-hmm. you put an object in a bucket, you pay for that API request, and then what? You have to pay to store the data there. DynamoDB, same thing. You put an object in the table, and then you have to pay to keep it there. And DSQL is no different. Sure. Um, just coming back to the DPUs, um, DSQL does not break out reads and writes in the same way as Dynamo did. And this was like actually a hotly debated topic within the team, how to, how to think <laughs> about this. And um, so DSQL being a SQL service, it has that like Lambda DNA to it, right? Like it's running compute because in SQL, you can parse JSON. You can do ag- aggregations. You can say, hey, sum up all the data, you know, group by whatever. And that takes time. Uh, it takes CPU instructions, it takes memory. And so what we realized is that there were actually a bunch of physical attributes that we had to account for when we thought about about uh, about how we meter usage on our service. So there's memory, there's CPU, there's network. And we didn't want to expose everything. You know, like you're going to pay per packet that we send within mm-hmm. our... And it's just super complicated for customers, right? Yeah, well, uh, while we're talking about Lambda, I, want, I have a question for our chat. Um, do you guys know there's a special name for that micro VM that Lambda uses? Let us know if you know what that name is. I'll, we'll give you that answer. That's a good I... question. All right, sorry. Good, Mark. Yeah. Um, okay. So, what we what what we have internally, and we're going to get into this in the metrics in a minute, is that we we focus our usage on operations for reading data, operations for writing data, and then just a, a general bucket of compute time. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, Let's go to our dashboard. So, it, you know, this cluster should have taken about a about a minute, ninety seconds to create. It's always something that we're that we're working on to improve. Uh, we can click in here. Isn't uh, that fantastic? Like creating a distributed database in a minute. It is. And what? Three clicks? Four clicks? Maybe. Yeah. Right count. And uh, no patching, right? No patching. Uh, <laughs> patching has caused me a lot of trauma in the past. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm just I've uh, I've just clicked the connect button. Uh, we're here in Cloud Shell, and it's just going to get us into the database really quickly. Um, I can list the tables that we have. Um, this is this is really just the Postgres uh, command line. If you're on a Mac and you do brew install, or you're on Ubuntu and you install Postgres, this is just the standard tooling that comes. Um, there's a little bit of integration that we have with IAM so that you don't have to worry about passwords. Um, I think you'll see that uh, in, in Dan's demo a little bit later today. Um, and this is true Postgres, right? Like, it's not like an interceptor that is like that's translating something. It is actual Postgres. It's actual Postgres, and uh, you know, on the server side, we are running uh, open source Postgres code. It you know, it's heavily modified. Uh, to work with some of that distributed system technology that I alluded to earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we commit data in DSQL, it's not going to local SSD. It's going to like a pretty complex uh, journal service that we use, uh, you know, in S3 and other AWS services. Uh, when we read data, it's coming out of a custom storage engine. But like the sort of the brains is Postgres. Okay. Okay. Um, just for ease of demo, what I want to do here is make a table and then we're going to sh- uh, shift over to the command name. So let's just okay. do create table uh, demo, uh, id int primary key. Um, wow, look at your type. You're really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then we can just have a look. Okay. Um, 
So let's say you wanted to understand what you just spent, right? We did something on the service, mm -hmm. right? When we when we created that cluster, we actually had a zero dollar per month spent. Um, now I've done something. I have to pay for that, right? So what actually have we done? Well, it turns out there is a couple of kilobytes of data have been stored because a table has a bunch of associated metadata. And so what the query engine is doing here is going through what we call the catalog and it's saying, hey, what tables do I have? What schemas do I have? Is there a table called demo? Um, and then, okay, there isn't. Let's make one. And it has to register that that table exists. It has to register the column definitions and so on and so forth. And those are turning into internal read and write operations. And the set of read and write operations took time. Um, and so we can actually go and understand that. Um, if you click on the metrics tab, um, we have a bunch of metrics that go to CloudWatch. These are typically about a minute behind. Um, there's a specific breakout that covers the uh, DPU usage as well as storage size that we spoke about from the pricing page. Um, for this demo, I, I don't want to be, you know, doing something and then be like, let's wait a minute. It's going to be super boring. So um, we have some actually, TV magic. <laughs> yeah, I've actually gone and made some clusters already that we can go take a look at. So this cluster over here, the uh, the cluster that I've named empty. The only thing that's happened on this cluster is I made it a few minutes ago and then I logged into it once. That's it. Okay. Um, and so if we go to if we go to this metrics tab, we can take a look, and you'll see that there's this single data point read DPU. Um, that's not a lot of DPUs, and if you divide it by a million, it's really, it's, it's nothing, right? Yeah. Um, and so what was that read DPU that I, that I paid for just by logging into the cluster? Well, like, I had to log in. I had to say, what does this user exist? And like, can it even log in? And so on and so forth, right? Um, okay. Um, what I like to do is take this cluster ID, and then actually jump over into the CloudWatch dashboard, because then I can build a custom graph that has everything that I want. So you can right. click on DSQL, uh, we get metrics by cluster, we can put our ID in, and you can see essentially all those graphs that we were looking at earlier. So you can take compute DPU, you can take uh, write DPU, you can put whatever you want, you can build your own graph, right? Right. Um, so here we have a cluster um, that I made a couple of minutes ago that has 10,000 rows in it. And this is what it looks like. Um, there was a bunch of DPUs to put 10,000 rows in, and you'll see right at the bottom that number five, there was no data in the cluster. And then there was no more DPU usage because I put my 10,000 rows in, but the cluster's size increased now because we're storing data. Right. And this so, is all dynamic. This is all dynamic, right? And Rock steady, no more DPUs, no more, no more cluster, right? Um, so let's actually go do that. Um, here is a cluster. I'm just logging in from my laptop now. There's no tables. Uh, let's create a table. So uh, I'm going to make this table called Tiny, and I'll explain why in a minute. Okay. Um, it's going to have a column called ID. It's going to be a UUID. Um, it's going to be our primary key. It's going to have a default value of give me a random UUID. Then it's going to have another column, which is just a text field. All standard Postgres. Yep. So we can read from this table. i got to say I'm thoroughly impressed that this has gone through without any typos yet. <laughs> <laughs> I will yeah. not disappoint you. Okay. Seriously. Um, so let's, uh, let's insert into this table. So insert uh, into tiny. We only need to specify the, the, the value for content because we've got this default value. Mm -hmm. And then we can say um, hi. Okay. Um, what we can also do here is say, let's generate um, a bunch of random values. So we're going to say, select, um, let's say, MD5 of random text from a series with, oh, there's my typo, a thousand rows. Oh, no. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. Um, Thousand rows. Okay. So if we do this a few times, um, and we get to ten thousand, I'm not going to count. We go, <laughs> that's close enough. We go back over here. That's the demo I did. Yeah. Right? So ten thousand rows in. Wait a minute. You can do this at home. Make a cluster. Takes you ninety seconds. Connect from the shell. 
put the commands in, you'll sh- you should see exactly the same thing. Yeah, do it at home, folks. But go, here's the question: <laughs> What does it cost? Okay, well, we'll get there. Okay, if you look at these numbers and convert them into dollars, yeah. like seventy over a million, like it's just not a lot of money. Oh right? wow! Um, so I've done the math, so you don't have to. Um, we need about twelve and a half million rows wow. uh, before we're gonna. <laughs> get those DPU costs and the storage costs to get to about a dollar. All right. Um, so let's go and do that. Okay. Um, and this is what it's going to land up looking like. I have a little tool um, that just runs that generation over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, let's just do that quickly so you can see what it looks like. Um, here's a cluster. Um, I'm going to run a workload. Um, I'm going to say I want 10 connections. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you why the, why this is the right math in a minute. Um, that's the number of batches. The workload I want to run is this tiny, tiny row workload that we've been running. Um, and we want to say rows per transaction is 1,000. And if you multiply 1,000 by uh, 12,500, you get to uh, uh, the right number of DPUs. Okay. And this is going to just chug along and uh, you know take some time. Uh, eventually, you will get to this value. Now, you can try this at home, and it should be almost exactly the same. Yeah. Now, it turns out I've, I've actually done the math wrong um, because we're not at a dollar. Yeah, you're <laughs> below a dollar. Yeah, and the reason for this is um, I, I wrote this blog post uh, a couple of months ago that has this exact experiment, um, and I've noticed that our compute time has actually gone down since then. Uh, because the team nice. has been working on some performance optimizations, uh, which has kind of screwed my math over now. So uh, I'll, I'll compute DPUs on what they used to be. They're low, and we're coming out at, at uh, 0.96. Th- this goes back to patching. You don't have to patch anything. You just get all the improvements when you create new connections. Yeah, fantastic. No, no downtime. Nobody had to click an upgrade button, mm. uh, figure out whether they want to do it on Friday or Saturday. It just happened. <laughs> It's <laughs> amazing. I think at the at the end of the day, that's that's what it's all about, Mark. Finding finding ways to delight customers and individuals that are encountering tech. Sometimes for the first time, sometimes you may be an old seasoned grizzled vet. Making life easier, getting rid of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, making it easy to get started, and then making it relatively inexpensive to go and start experimenting. That's fantastic. Yeah, you know, I've started a lot of applications uh, in my career, and like you know, many of them, many of the ones that matter, land up needing data at some point. And it's just such a pleasure to work with DSQL. It really like, is. When you get started, you're not thinking, "Oh my goodness, how do I secure this thing? How do I scale this thing? When am I going to patch it? What's my maintenance window?" Like none of these questions. You just you just click that button. Um, so I just want and, to show and, you one last thing and here. And make it hard for you to spend a dollar. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's it's. I had to write software. Because I didn't want to hit up enter so many times. Um, I'm just going to run my my loader again to show you something that's super cool. So you'll, if you'll notice, the difference between these two lines is the value to dash C. Um, so we had ten, and now we went a thousand connections. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just fr- from my laptop. We got up to fourteen hundred transactions per second Whoa. each in doing a thousand rows. That's <laughs> You know, one and a half million rows per second, and I didn't have to pick a different instance type or anything yeah. like that. That's just something that DSQL did on my behalf. By the way, when you're creating tables, I think this is also a differentiator. You don't have to worry about any specific schemes or shards or anything. Just give us a well-formed primary key, and that's all you need to do with DSQL. Yeah. Um, okay. So here's the the sort of gotcha in my demo. Okay. Right. Did we actually spend a dollar? We, we, it was close. Close enough. Okay, we round up by 0.96 to 1. Do we get there? Absolutely. It's close enough for engineering. It's close enough. Mark, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And You've got about a minute left. Is there any parting nuggets of wisdom you'd like to give? Oh, by the way, I do want to give the answer to that to earlier yeah, please question. Do. So that VM micro VM is called Firecracker. 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 Uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you got it. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Do you have any yeah, words fire, on this? Yeah, Firecracker is actually the tech we built for Lambda, right? So that's that's one of those things. Yeah, uh, get get started with DSQL. It's super easy. Uh, virtually unlimited scale, um, high availability, zero infrastructure management, and a free tier. So if you yeah. run this experiment uh, today at home, you will be on the free tier. Yeah, and take that survey and spend that dollar on DSQL. Or not. (laughs) Or not. (laughs) Hang tight, folks. We'll be right back with another session. See you soon.